My friends, hello and welcome to GoldenEye Speed Lore, where we look at the stories around the speedrunners, their quests to achieve world records and speedrun greatness, the community, the video game, all told through the lens of the world record progression. Yes, and tonight we're looking at a level which you know, is honestly one of the most insane levels in the entire game with some of the deepest lore in the entire game. A level I save for this later portion of the series because while well, we opened with its counterpart on Secret Agent. Indeed, we are entering the land of spliced runs, the world of devastation and elation, the temple of RNG, god of speedrunning luck. This indeed is Frigate Double O Agent. And to begin Frigate Double O Agent, well, let's just look at the objectives. Four insane objectives. Rescue the hostages, disarm the bridge bomb, disarm the engine room bomb, and plant a tracking bug on the helicopter. We'll see. It seems pretty straightforward, but it's probably the least straightforward level in all of Goldeneye. It's the level where there's probably the most root possibilities in all of Goldeneye. Objective A in particular, rescue hostages. There are six hostages on the level. Five of them must not only be released from their hostage takers, but they must also escape. And that is another element unto itself. So let's take a look here. This, of course, is our good friend, the Madman Fletcher, one of his earlier Frigate Double O runs. We can see he's released one hostage. Keep looking in the top for another message, hostage escaped. You need that hostage escaped message to appear for them to, you know, escape. Uh, on agent, two escaping completes the objective. On secret, you need four. On double, you need five. So he's released now, and it, you see it takes even time for the hostage to be released. The one he just shot out, the taker, had a choking death. So there, you see, it took a few seconds for him to fully pass away and for the uh, message hostage released to come up. Because the hostage won't start moving, won't start running away to his end position until he is released, until his hostage taker is not only eliminated, but fully passed away and faded out. And, uh, you know, we know about the guard animation deaths by now. We know how long it can take. Some animations are very quick, two seconds, but some are much longer, three or four. Oh, see, and look, he had, he didn't eliminate that guard quickly enough. He took out the hostage. If the same happened there and the hostage passed away, he would have failed the mission. You see? So very, very, very uh, important. Uh, you only have a, I, I think it's two, I think it is exactly two seconds uh, to shoot out the guards before they shoot the hostages. I think it's two seconds on double O, two and a half on secret, and three on agent. So it actually does make double O even harder. And that one in particular is very hard. Uh, the one that ended up getting killed. But luckily there are six hostages, only five need to escape. And see objective A completed there? That was the fifth one getting escaped right there. So that was... That was good, and now we've completed, we've completed all the objectives. Um, yeah, I'm sure you saw him take out the bomb diffuser to press Z and defuse the bombs, and a time of 202, and also get the tracker bug throw. So, let's see. Yeah, so the, the tracker bug, obviously the helicopter is all the way down here. Gonna run out to the end, take out the tracking bug. Bingo, bango, throw it on the chopper. Um, you need to be looking at the chopper while it lands, otherwise the chopper unloads and so you fail the objective. And likewise he'll come over here and he will pause for the bomb diffuser and defuse this. Now, interestingly, it's a very, it happens to every new player, you press B at the diffuser instead of Z and it blows up and you fail the mission. Equally, you can sometimes shoot the bomb on top of the console that'll blow up and fail a mission there is a lot to be weary of and we will see some strange runs tonight that is absolutely for sure uh, so great 
Uh, thanks to Madman Fletcher for that epic archive of an old run, two minutes, two seconds. Frigate Double Agent. Cool stuff. So the earliest Frigate Double Agent world record we have an account of is this Sterling Neblet 138. A no video claimed in 1998. A Sterling shows up a lot recently on the forums. And he, I know he watches the speed lore, so hello, Sterling. Uh, of course, historic uh, record here, 138. A no video was not abnormal at the time. And uh, this would last, you know, for about a year, roughly, in that era, until one man came along, Wouter Jansen. Wouter would lower the record a number of times. 125, 124, 123. We can see Sterling here also had 123 claimed. Eventually, his 123 was never the world record, but I actually played a run in 123 uh, using the strategy that probably Wouter would have used for the 123 and maybe Sterling as well. So you leave the boat and you come in and do these two uh, hostage takers. These are the traditional agent hostages. Then you're gonna come down here and uh, you can see the guards on double are pretty accurate, so you will get hit when you take out these guys. Oh, wow, that was a bit intense. Gonna come in here. That engine, uh, that's the engine room hostage. He's a good hostage to save. The one we just saved is actually the slowest one, and we'll get into the, the routing of the hostages a little later on. And uh, yeah, you come out this way, you come out this way, you open that door, okay, you open this rolling door, you select the tracker bug, and I think at this point we still have to go back and, oh yeah, this is cool, look at that. So you can see, And you can see hostage escaped, so hostages are starting to escape, that's good, we want to have, um, f we want to have five total hostages escape, of course. Hostage released, good stuff. Let's see if we get another escape. Hostage escaped, and I ran to the boat, and oh no, this failed. This failed. The hostages, five of them did not escape, only maybe two or three escaped. Uh, we saw the hostage escaped message come up at least twice. And so that indicates to us, we might have seen it more actually down here maybe. But... You, you never know how... See, there's a hostage escape. You never know how many escape there. Because if the... No, okay, there's a, there's two. That's two for sure. But sometimes, it's like, could a third have escaped? Could two have escaped almost at the same time? And so the message pops up. And uh, you don't know if one or two have escaped at that moment. In that case, we know for sure to escape. Because the escape came out, then released, then escaped. And that, that one's a third escaped. So we know for sure that on this run, four of the five hostages escaped. But that's very... This is what happens when you play Control, uh, Frigate, Double O, and Secret Agent. You run through the level, you run to the end, and you hope all the hostages escape, and they usually don't. And we will find out just how unlikely it is for them all to escape uh, a little bit later on. But you can see, like... Okay, Hotch escapes right here. That's number four. Number five could have escaped in the fade out there. And then we would have um, uh, the, the, the cutscene would show up. Bond would put away his weapon. It would be epic. You would celebrate immensely. So that is Frigate Double O in a nutshell. Let's watch a world record. Okay. Wilder would improve the 123 on 21. 120, and then in February 2001, he would get this speed run. Let's take a look. So, doing that route that I just kind of explained, taking out those two uh, agent hostages. Now, these hostages in the basement, you know, I, I would say fairly obviously, take longer to go out of the boat to their despawn positions. Their despawn positions are outside of the boat on the deck. So, the two guys in the beginning are, you know, fairly near points where they can escape. The guys in the basement, these three, are a little bit less close to that point. 
So you, you wonder if it would make more sense to go into the basement first. Okay, there's at least one hostage escaping. You wonder if maybe it would make more sense to go into the, into the basement first and release these slower hostages, give them more time to possibly escape. Could a route where that happens uh, be conceived maybe later on? It looks like only one or two hostages have escaped so far, but let's see what happens here. Released. Escaped. Oh my god, a com Objective A completed! Objective A completed. Unbelievable. And Wouter Jansen delivered this time. 118. Wow. Amazing speedrun by Wouter Jansen. 118. Untied. And this was the sixth untied he had achieved on Frigate 00 by, you know, February 2001. That's pretty impressive. Even more impressive would be this next run. Nearly a year later, November 2001. Wilder at this point, you know, when a speed game is new and you're playing it, you kind of cycle through all the levels. They're not super optimized yet, so you can pretty much improve your PB on every single level. And, like, that's the point when speedrunning is, like, the most fun, I would say, personally. Like, really, it's the it's when you get hooked. It's like any run can improve on any level, so you kind of just cycle through them, and eventually, months later, you'll get back to a level you've already played and improve it a little bit more. And that's exactly what we're going to see Welder do on this next run. This next run truly was historic at the time uh, it was a legendary run amazing i think many of you will be surprised at the time and it's a remarkable speed run so much so it's dedicated to our speed lore champion cory meyer thanks for supporting speed lore on patreon let's take a look at this remarkable wouter jansen run from november 2001 We're going to see the, the same strategy, the same route through the frigate. You can see he skips injuring that guard. A little bit risky because he can boost you through that room. And so you're not going to be able to finish off that hostage taker. It's hard to believe. 2001, I mean, it's a long time ago. And, uh... No, it really, I mean, there's people watching not even born then, so it's, that's getting to be a long, long, long time. Okay, Wilder just dummies that hostage. That hostage, by the way, is the slowest at escaping. He, he has the longest route between his position and any of his uh, escape positions. So he's the least likely to escape to begin with. So not a huge loss, but... Okay, takes out that. Now this, we can see that we're at the end of the level, basically, right? That hostage only has one of seven locations he can possibly get to in time before escaping. And he clearly escaped in the fade out there. Frigate double O agent 114 by Wilder Jansen. A really really an amazing run um, yeah because we don't get to see objective a completed on screen that means that at least one hostage escaped in the fade out so hostage escaped like at least one more escaped in that time there's about one second of fade out where a hostage can escape and uh, complete objective a and that's what happened here so Remarkable stuff. This took Wilder a long, long time and was really one of his better records in that era. If we go back and look at December 31st, 2001, you know, this is a trip down memory lane. You know, we can see Dam 53 hasn't even happened yet. Facilities are, you know, 5859. Uh, Surface 1, 153. Insane. Wilder's 114 on Frigate 00. Now, the overall combined time is 122.03. If we skip to a year later, the overall combined time is 119.47. So over two minutes 
in one year has fallen off of the overall combined time over two minutes. That's on average two seconds per level, but yet Frigate 00114 still stands strong. That kind of shows you how good of a record that was for the year 2001. The fact that nobody could, like every single other level is getting improved by two seconds. <laughs> you know, Surface 1 is getting improved from 105 to, to 104. You know, like uh, it's, it's insane. But meanwhile, that 114 stays strong. Boss, of course, would start to rise with the rankings, start to get some insane records himself. Very, very good player. He eventually become champion. He told me that the longest grind of his Gold Knight career, even to date, was this one. Frigate Double O Agent trying to tie Wouters 114. Kind of hard to believe. Even longer than Statue 00218. Even, you know, longer than any of Boss's other great untied world records. You know, his insane defection PA untied. Uh, all this stuff didn't compare to how long it took Boss to tie Welder's 114, which he would do in December 2003. So over two years, Welder's time was untied for. Let's see, the, there's one hostage escape for sure. Could have seen one earlier. And really, it's a testament to the unlikelihood of all five hostages escaping. I mean, you gotta think, like, every hostage has six possible escape points. Uh, this one he just released has a seven. We know that that hostage needs to pick his best one of seven. We know the ones in the basement probably need to pick their best. Oh, there's an objective they completed. Probably need to pick their best one of six. Maybe maybe two of six, so one in three. And you start doing the math, you know, one in seven times one in six times one in three. And you're getting up to one in the hundreds uh, odds of completing that objective on a frigate double O run. 114 isn't a super optimized time with that route. Uh, you could probably get a few seconds lower, but yeah, that's, it's insane to actually get a completion. And so Boss and Browder would, would share this record 2003, 2004. 2005, uh, in, an interesting chap would come along by the name of Alex Anderson. Let's take a look at this run from January 2005. So he, we can right off the bat, he's taking a different route. He is going directly into the basement. Okay, okay, cool. That's that. Okay, very interesting technicality, Oyster, clearing up for us there. We'll get into it more later for sure. We can see Alex is going directly to the basement, releasing these hostages. This will give them more time to escape. He's going to warp through this pipe warp. Okay, that's called the pipe warp. And there's a, a crack, a big enough crack to get through. Take it, these two hostage takers. That guy. Oh, now he's going to go for the bug throw. This is going to be pretty epic. Chucks the bug. Nails it on the chopper. It looks crazy. It looks really crazy. Uh, but it's actually pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Goes in there, takes out that uh, hostage taker. Defuses the bomb. Bingo, bango. Strafes down the stairs. The hostage escaped. And in and completed. Completed. Unbelievable. 114. Apparently this wasn't Alex's first 114. It was actually his second which is kind of crazy but yeah that's why he he'd become the third person to tie uh 114 in january 05. well i i mean 
uh, things were getting experimented in the game at the time, and I guess uh, look, it all came together for Alex on that run. It makes sense logically. Going into the basement there makes a lot of sense. Release those hostages first, and that's just what he did. So good stuff by Alex. I know a little bit disappointed there wasn't any, you know, happy hardcore rave music, um, but I think it's because this was a duped 114. His original 114 was never made or lost. Um, that it wasn't quite as a euphoric moment for him, so we didn't put in music. But that's life, you know, so what can you do? Now, another gentleman would go on and tie the 114 a couple months later. Our pal Dan Cervone. Let's see what route he uses. And he was going with this newer basement first route, uh, which I believe Alex was the one to experiment with it and come up with that route. Well, that's what happens, uh, Ted, when Welder's 114 was so strong that it stood the test of time. You can see Chervoni got hung up on the door there. Probably cost a second, maybe more. So again, the name of the game on Frigate isn't... And there's a back boost, another stuck... The name of the game isn't optimization. It's get a, a decent run and get the... Well, we can... I presume is now one in hundreds of luck. To uh, complete the level. Okay, there's the bug throw. It's like, you know, we, we can know for sure that this hostage is a one in six. Even assume that the other four hostages are one in three. You know, that's now one in three, one in nine, 27. 84 times 1 in 6. This is 1 in 400 chance. 1 in 500 chance of the hostages escaping. Ah, that is a great question. There's Chervone's 114. That is actually a really, really good question. Swatris. So, the reason you shoot here. 7 to 10 bullets. Is so that. This room at the ending. There are usually three guards in this room. Now there's only one. Shooting there lures the two guards out of this room. And so it makes taking out that final uh, hostage taker much simpler, less chaotic. If, they're, if the other guys are alive, they can blow up the console, blow up the bomb, which can fail the objective. Or even if you defuse it first, it can still blow up you or the hostage, so... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we just go to Wilder's 118, we can see, we'll see how, yeah, we'll see there's two guards in this room. They might have left, yeah, they'll, okay, if we go back a little bit, we'll see. It's like, there's at least one, there's one on the other side too. And if you dive right into the room, they'll cause trouble for you, so not the best thing. So yeah, clever strategy. I mean, these are definitely 2005 era strats. They're good strats, um, but they're not like, uh, you know, they're not like game breaking, hack the code, warp to the credits tier stuff. You know, that's a good question too. Sammy is like, what's going on where these guys are planting bombs on a boat that they've taken hostages on? And you also wonder why guards can pull grenades. I mean, one a guard pulled a grenade on Alex's run, I believe, somewhere down here. Which can actually be useful because it can it can clear out guards who might get in the way of the hostages' paths towards the end. It sometimes also kills the hostages, which which isn't very good. But you like wonder why can guards pull grenades on a frigate boat, um, and they they were programmed well enough to not pull them on train. You know, it makes sense. You don't want to blow up a train you're on, but. Wouldn't you also not want to throw grenades on a boat? To me, that seems... But you know what? That's the game. And uh, it is what it is. It's funny stuff. So there we go. So yeah, Alex and Cervone would get 114s in 2005. And at that time, Cervone, he had a few levels that he really enjoyed playing. Frigate Double O was one of them. And so he would carry on after his 114. And he would get this run in May 2005. Oh yeah, we used to shoot a couple times at the top of the stairs there too. That's kind of like 
a long forgotten spot. I think people think it would clear out one of the two agent hostages. Uh, guards in those rooms. Guards in those rooms, yeah. Crouching to, to shoot at that guard, it's one of very, very few places where crouching was ever a world record strategy on any Goldeneye level. Nowadays it could be a little bit more because of our leaning and stuff, and crouch leaning, but back then it was never... Oh, he, wow, he, so you can see he had to double back for that a hostage taker. He didn't, didn't fully finish him off in that first go. These guys can take like four, five, six shots in the arms because their, their guns are big. So they'll survive three limb hits. You could easily get three limb hits and two gun hits, shoot five times in the torso and they won't die. And it's really uh, kind of troll, but that's kind of what happened here. And he jumps in, no A on screen, completed. Frigate 00113. Very, very good stuff by Cervone. And if we look at the world records here in September 2005, a couple months later, we can see some Trevone on Tides. Good records by Trevone. He had Frigate Secret Agent as well. Aiza would tie it. Tying some boss stuff. But we're noticing Welder's kind of last pass through the game. 2005 was the year that Welder would last get on Tides. We can see his 17 is still on Tide from 03. We learned that last episode. But Frigate 23... Streets 113, Depots, these were set in 05. Jungle 58 was 03, and Caverns as well, and some of these others, but 05, Walter was, it was the last time Walter was holding on as, as, uh, as a true top active player of the game. And believe it or not, it seems strange. I mean, he did get the 23 on Frigate Secret Agent. So it's like, would, would he have gone for a sweep, maybe? Would that have been a good time for him to go for an untied sweep? And maybe he was going for it. It would never quite happen for him, unfortunately. But he may have gone for it. And it would eventually lead to Wilder getting this speedrun. The final untied of Wilder's career. You know, a guy who got more world records in the game than anyone else. Absolute legend. The only player in Golden history to have over 100 untied world records. And this was Wouter's final untied to this day. I mean, never say never, but it's true. And this record is so meaningful, it has to be dedicated to someone. Our speed lore champion, Madrai Bread, Thank you for supporting Speedlore on Patreon. Let's watch Lauder's final untied world record ever set. Frigate Double Agent. And like, I mean, you can... Again, this isn't super optimized yet. Uh, Dan Cervone literally... missed... Killing a hostage taker and have to turn back and take him out. I mean, like, even that shot by Wilder, like, you could have uh, shot it more, you know, you could have finished him off earlier with a better headshot or something. It would be kind of tricky, but doable. All these stucks. Pipe, the clean, the pipe warp is clean. Okay. Looks like the consoles are going to blow up. Beautiful headshot. Pauses. Tucks the tracker bug. That was a really nice throw. Completed. I mean, it's not a gimme though. You can fail that tracker bug. Um, and it, it, we might see it happen later on. Defuses the the bomb. Hostage escaped. Hostage escaped. A up. So like at the very last second, there are two hostages escaped. Very clearly. Frigate 00112 by a Wouter Jansen. Insane. Yeah, it's like you can very clearly see it's like out here. Okay, so Hosh is escaped. It fades away. Hosh is escaped. And then A's up. That A wouldn't come up unless another hostage escaped. 
So two hostages escaped. Like, there's one. I mean, I guess in this one you can see where all of them escape, which is kind of cool. One of them might have escaped somewhere around here. Maybe not. Maybe we can see four, four distinctively complete. That would make sense. Yeah, like, there's one. You know, two could have escaped around the same time there, like within a couple frames of each other. Um, yeah, that one's up. That that escapes up for a long time, so that's like two. Well, we can only see two or three, but they all got out. You'll almost never see a run where all five, you'll see hostage escape come up five times. Uh, some of their escaping will overlap with that message. That message stays up for like probably five seconds, and it can be superseded by new messages, like releasing a new hostage or defusing the bomb or so on. But yeah, good stuff by Wilder Jansen. The final untied world record he would ever set. Forget double 112. And unfortunately for him, this would not last very long. Not even one month later, Frigate Connoisseur Alex Anderson would post this run. Yeah, I believe Alex is using 1.1 control style at this point. He he's using, you know, he's switched to 1.2 since, but it was 1.1 back back in the day. Duck. So he's using the R aimer even. To try to get a headshot in that guard. Uh, now you're thinking of his frigate 106 on secret agent Robbie. The one da 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 da. It was like a song his friend made in Fruit Loops or something. So you could see there was a guard. There was two guards in that last hostage room. The one on the right can mess you up. That's why some of the extra shooting is done, um, but it's not a huge deal. One bar of health, he's in low health, which does happen as well. It's uncommon to fully pass away on a frigate double-o run that's fast, but it can happen on runs that get kind of janky with a lot of... Oh, there's a... Oh, that was an early A complete. Beautiful. Beautiful uh, objective A complete. 111, amazing, untied by Alex Anderson. A uh, great run. Good run by Alex. Untied. And uh, yeah, Alex and I got along well, so he would kind of, he introduced me to uh, all sorts of crazy techno music and nightcore and dance music and stuff like that. I mean, you know, I was actually looking, I mean, it's a good question everyone is asking, where's the insane music? I was looking up the term nightcore on Wikipedia the other day. And it looks like uh, it's it, Wikipedia claims it was first used in 2001, the term Nightcore. But I remember Alex introducing it to me in like 05 or 06. He was like, oh man, I was looking for this, this crazy song, but like I stumbled across this new genre called Nightcore on LimeWire. It's amazing. And he sent me all these songs back then, and it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty wild stuff. And maybe, maybe we'll, well, we'll see what happens. But yeah, wild. Uh, good run by Alex. One of his handful of untieds as well. Um, I don't think it uh, was his la last untied. No, I, I want to say he definitely got at least a couple untieds after that. But um, yeah, I see at least one in 06. So. But he, he didn't have too, too many in his career, and that was certainly one of them. Let's see. Three untieds. Wow. So that was one of his three. Pretty insane. Good stuff. Well, it pretty much is King Wiley. It pretty much is. It's it's actually like 120%. It's not even that that fast. Okay. Let's watch a non-world record run. This one is kind of cool. This is Brandon Sanford Bix. <laughs> uh, I've told many stories about Bix over the years. This run, he told me about back in the day on AIM chat, okay? And... He told me specifically, he got this time, it's a 113, so it would have been like tied for third place. He doesn't 
release the basement engine room hostage. And okay, check that out right there, right there. You can see, you can see the hostage. He's going down the stairs on the left-hand side. You can see him going down the stairs. So that hostage is, you know, right now he's moving. He has to run around all around this engine, all around that big fat engine, which you see below. The hostage that you would free the other guys who are crouching, he starts there, right? And these two hostages run the same path. So you can obviously see that this guy has a lot more to run around the engine. He has to run like all the way down here and around this engine and up these stairs. Whereas the other guy would start like in this corner and then run up the stairs. So definitely it's a, it's a risk. It's going to be a less often completion by not freeing the basement hostage. But of course, I'm showing this run because that's exactly that. It does end up being a completion. It's a 113, tied for third place. Only Alex and Wilder had lower. And this, the idea that you could complete it without doing the crouch basement, I mean, that takes like a few seconds to crouch and release that, that hostage. So this... It means like maybe we could get down to 109, 108, 107 territory. Um, oh, you can see him. He, that one shot, he almost shoots the bomb there. That that like barely missed. The bomb is on top of that console. So like that does happen where you blow it up by shooting it at the end of a run. Like totally happens. There we go. Hosh has escaped. And. A completed in. Pretty insane, considering that he, he skips um, a faster hostage in the basement. 113. Yeah, and this run would have a huge heavy impact. But it was on the tapes that he sent to Mouser Scribe, which were lost for eight years before finally being captured. So... Even though he was able to describe this run to us and tell us that he skipped the basement hostage, no one really like took note of it much or cared because there was no video. And that's just like unfortunate, but that's that's what happened. As a result, people wouldn't really skip that hostage. I mean, until much, much later. So well, let's watch the next run. It's now gonna be July 06. You know, I'm going to be starting to rise up the ranks. I'm getting pretty decent at the game myself. I've been playing for about a year. Uh, but Boss is still pretty damn good. And Boss is um, trying to get as many records as he can. And he's like, you know that 111? Might be, might be doable. Might be doable. Let's go for it. And so he would go for it. This run's probably gonna look quite clean with maybe one or two like noticeable sticks or something. Okay, so he missed the door there. He had to slow down full speed there. Um, yeah, I guess this run's looking similar to the other runs of that era. Reload. And like, because now he's also saved the engine hostage, both of these guys could escape. Like that's possible, and then so one of the later hostages might not escape, and like that could work too. So. Releasing six hostages does give you a better chance that at least five will escape. Of course it does. Runs right in there. That guy's gonna hit him, yep. And he can mess up your position here on the on the uh, bug throw. Here we go. Nice, uh, nice bug throw. Opens the door. Bingo, bango. Hostages. One. Ooh, that was pretty cheeky. One quick R aimer headshot. Hits the defuse. A little bit of a hang up there. Escapes. Oh, no A on screen. Completes in the fade. Frigate 00111. Pretty good time by boss. Now, I remember for some reason, it was like, I can't even, I don't even know why. Of course, at this time I'm an angsty 17 year old. Um, 
you know, I was buddies with Alex. Like I said, I mean, he introduced me to this crazy music. How could I ever not be buddies with him? And Boss, you know, in my mind at least, I would kind of vilify Boss. He was this, at the time, this, this much older guy, um, you know, less emotional, uh, kind of more a straight shooter, just with talking about the games. And it's silly, like obviously looking back, but when you're, when you're a kid, um, and there's this guy dominating the games, beating these world records, beating you to world records, you're kind of a rival with him, but he's still so much better than you. You know, in your mind, you start to vilify people that way. And so I was like, ah, that, that boss, that champion, oh, boss is about five years older than me. So yeah, when you're 17, that's like a big deal. You know, when you're in your late 20s, 30s, it's not a big deal, but yeah. Um, so anyways, boss got this 111, I was like, oh man, like, he tied the record of my good pal, Alex, son of a gun, that boss. I, f you know, God damn it. I, I, I was probably playing for Frigate 00 as well, because it's a fun level. And one of the funnest parts of the level is that because it's like a lottery, right? You know why gambling is, is, gives you that rush. It's dangerous because any run can be it. Oh, maybe this moment will change my life. Maybe this moment I'll get an untied world record in Goldeneye. And I had achieved a few at this point, but that even makes it more intense because that's the rush you're pursuing. Oh, give me that world record. Give me that untied. It's so amazing. Such an amazing feeling. And don't forget double O, any run can be it. Um, both Boss's run and Alex's run had some, you know, hang up some sticks, um, could have had faster guard kills and so on. So it's like, it, it was a good level to play, and I was kind of mad. I was like, oh man, the boss got 111 before me, he tied Alex's run, I want to get my revenge on the level. And so I would set out to play Frigate 00 the very next day. Boss was got this on July 22, 2006. On July 23, 2006, I would play Frigate 00, and somehow, even though we've learned the odds of completing Frigate 00 are like 1 in... 500, 1 in 1,000. Somehow, I got a run that completed, believe it or not. Of course, back in that era, I was just making a point of how, you know, I like this epic dance pop music. Um, we know from the past that I would use one of my favorite artists at the time, Cascada, in a lot of these world record videos that I achieved. And so this is indeed a Goose classic video from that era, webcammed, Cascada, it's it's just beautiful. It's one of my favorite world records, maybe that I've ever gotten, um, and it's dedicated to our speed lore champion Robert G. Thank you for supporting speed lore so loyally on Patreon. Uh, I mean, this one is epic. It's a banger. Sorry, YouTube, but uh, I'll link to it in the description. Let's take a look.
in <laughs> insanity. Uh, yeah, that's One More Night by Cascada off the album, the 2005 album, Every Time We Touch. Uh, one of numerous songs on the album with the, you know, six minor, four, one, five chord progression. Uh, bangs as hard as any of them, that's for sure. Yep, absolutely one of my favorite runs I've ever done uh, in GoldenEye. And it was usually on Forget Double O, it's like you're on a journey through hundreds of hours and failed runs to get a completion. And I had been on and off for the previous few months, but it was like even more elation that I was able to get it um, one day after boss tied 111. I was also able to join the party there. And so that was pretty cool. And we can see Alex boss goose right there. So, I mean, that was, that was a good time. And I mean, if you remember from the first episode, I had a kind of on and off rivalry with Boss about his 103 secret agent on Frigate. So it was sort of some minor redemption for that too. And it's just like, you know, I know that obviously people who enjoy watching the speed lore, many of them, uh, a lot of it is like a nostalgia trip, right? At least the, maybe the initial spark. Um, oh, oh, what's this video about Goldeneye, this game I used to like, and you explore this crazy world. And for at least a brief time, it's like this blast of nostalgia to uh, enter this crazy world of Goldeneye speedrunning and, and learn a little bit about it. And for me, even though this has kind of become my life, for me, this run is like pure nostalgia because it takes me back to 2006, summer 06. You know, I was 17 years old, um, hardly a care in the world. I mean, obviously, it doesn't feel like that at the time. You obviously feel your own uh, pressures and struggles and so on, but you know, it's like, if I, you know, you don't like to get caught up on it, but it's like, sometimes I think, you know, if I could go back in time to a point like before I made any major screw ups in my life, you know, at all, and I could start again from that point, it would be that summer 2006, just before grade 12, man, it's like, that's the point, you know, to go back to for sure and relive. And uh, this run was my best run of that summer for sure so it brings me back to a really a really good time uh that i look back upon fondly for sure whether you knew it back then or not so wow good times good music good speed runs what more is there to life and uh with that we're at the end of our part one of this wonderful frigate double o speed lore so hey summer 06 things were pretty good uh but hey they might not stay that way for too too long uh, i do want to go back and look at this 111 though you can see a couple items that are i would say worth you know you can see things weren't perfect on this run in fact even though it's one of my favorite runs right after this pipe warp You'll see I get boosted into that bunch of crates. Obviously that lost a little bit of time. If I didn't get boosted there, I could have slipped right through and been like out the door by now. So it's probably a full second lost. So it's like 110 certainly possible. Right here was cool though because that guard, the close one to me, approaches me. He must have heard me shoot a little bit coming up the stairs in that previous hostage taker. And so he's been alerted from that position on the right of the hostage towards me and the auto aim in english is not that great so luckily i can shoot right by him if this was on japanese the auto aim would be seeking on him um, but it, so it works out and i kind of push forward even a little bit extra to make sure that the auto aim doesn't lock on which is a pretty good uh technique pretty good read of the of the level of the run which was cool and then yeah you throw the bug and you back up because you need to be looking in the direction of the bug throw, otherwise the helicopter unloads. So you need to keep the helicopter loaded in order for the bug to land on it, which is the bug objective. And then, yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, generate leg here by switching weapons and shooting a bunch of times. Objective A completes. And uh, bingo, bango, frigate 00111. And good time and beautiful run. Always one of my favorites. Like I said, a great time. Uh, in my life I reflect upon fondly and uh, you know over the next year though things would begin to change of course 
Ace and Clemens would start rising up the ranks. You know, this old tale, old familiar story. And I would start to feel the pressure. You know, I wanted to rise up the ranks as high as I could. And uh, those guys were, they were just better than me. That's all it came down to. They were better than me. They were passing me and it, it felt bad. This next run is fairly interesting because it's about a year later. It's September 2007. I would have just started university and, uh, you know, obviously things are changing in your life. It's tough. Should I still be playing Goldeneye, right? That's a big question that was in my mind at the time. Uh, should I still be wasting my time playing video games? It sounds silly now, given everyone games universally, but back then it was, you know, when you're dedicating hours and hours to speedrunning, it's a bit different. Should you focus on other things? And may maybe, maybe so. But it would add to my frustration at the time, right? It's like other things in life weren't going exactly as planned. I was still in love with speedrunning, addicted to speedrunning. And so it was like these conflicting worlds crashing um, and causing mayhem, at least in my mind, you know? So September 2007, September 1207, um, I would have turned on Goldeneye. You know, it, it, I would have been maybe one of my first days at university or maybe a couple days before I started, something like that. And I had come up with what I thought was a decent frigate double-O strategy. And I guess we'll see it play out. Um, on this run. First run of the night. This run is pretty cool and it would influence the following several runs to come. Uh, so this run is dedicated to our Speedlore champion, Riley P. Thank you for supporting Speedlore on Patreon. This one is, uh, well, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Let's, let's take a look. And yeah, I mean, I just thought, you know, what if clearly the hostage in the basement engine room is closer to his escape position than the other one you save that I mentioned this is the slowest one. I pointed him out a couple runs ago. So what if we went into that engine room and freed that hostage first? What would happen? It's a little bit of a slower strategy. But well, check it out. Come in here, shoot that guy, come back here, go down here, uh-huh, shoot out that guy. And clearly I feel like I've released that hostage before I would have if I went around the other way. You're freeing the other guy and then kneeling and shooting that guy. You know, it feels like that is, uh, you're faster to that hostage and then it's the same ending. So to me this felt like this definitely should be a better strategy. It should at least make it more likely to complete. And even the, I even got hung up a little bit there, didn't open that door. So it's like this run could even have maybe been a second or two faster. Decent run though, completed the bug throw. Even I, I kind of missed that door, kind of went through a door beside it. Hostage escape we're seeing. Take out him. Get the bomb diffuser. Bingo bango. And down the stairs, switching weapons to increase leg. Hostage is complete. The leg thing isn't like a, a proven science, it's just like a superstition. But completed. And it was a frigate 00111 duped. It's really unlikely to dupe a time like this. A chaotic record, heavily luck dependent. Uh, usually you wouldn't dupe a time like that. So this was crazy. This was kind of a good sign. Like, oh, maybe I'm going to get an untied if I can, if I can get a faster run that this completes. I kind of felt like, oh, this might increase the hostage odds from one in 500 to maybe like one in 200, like a reasonable improvement. And well, would it, would it do it? Would it work out for me? Sadly, the answer is no. About one month later, the one and only, of course, perfect ace at the age of 12 would get this speed run. Uh, this is a remarkable 
speed run dedicated to our speed lord champion four day bender thank you for supporting speed lord on patreon four day bender this run is historic and notable and let's just take a look Ace was pretty damn good. It's a new down here. Run through. It's a right. It's a right year special. Okay. And look, he's he's using the strat I came up with. Now keep in mind the record is one eleven. Okay, it's important to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Nice warp. Like this is suck. This is a very, very, very clean run here. Two, two shots. Head, headshots. Oh my god, that is gutsy. Oh my god, he has one bullet left. This is like pretty cooked. <gasps> a bit of a stuck in the door. Is he gonna make this shot? This headshot. Oh my god, he made the headshot. Hostage escaped. Bomb diffuser. Diffused. Almost passes away. Hostage there. Escaped. A completed! Frigate Double O Agent 108. A three second untied. According to Ace, he played for many, many hours, didn't get completions. But then he got a 109. The 109 video was never made. And then 15 minutes later, he got this 108. Uh, unbelievable. And yeah, see, it's a good point that it would have been hype at the time, definitely. But at the same time, it's like you can't blame him. Ace was 12. He wasn't the most, like, um, you know, talkative or... It's like the appreciation wasn't the same. Um, you know, and it's understandable. Um, an amazing, amazing world record, but, you know, we almost took it for granted. I mean, I personally, like I said, I was kind of starting to get into not a great headspace, and uh, I I definitely uh, resented it a little bit. I resented that there was this 12-year-old uh, destroying me. You know, I felt like I was this, you know, I'm 18, I got to get my life together and so on. Um Meanwhile, there's this 12-year-old destroying me. And not only that, but Clemens is also destroying me um, as well. And, I mean, he's also very, very good Golden Epic. And it's kind of the story back then. I mean, I know Clemens and, and Boss and everyone, Carl as well, all went through those periods where it's like you're resenting everything about speedrunning, even though it's like the only thing you want to be doing. You know, you hate that you're playing it all day long. You hate that... Others are better than you, and you just can't handle it. You know, you're not you're not mature enough to handle the stress. I mean, it sounds silly. It really does sound silly, but it's true. You, you just can't handle the world. You just can't. And um, you can you can make bad choices and bad decisions when that happens. And the next couple runs we're gonna see were indeed some of those bad decisions. In November 2007, I would post this speedrun. So let's let's take a look at this this run here. Up the door. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to go with my same old strategy down the stairs yeah 69 ratio you know the, the music i put in this video was uh, avril lavigne my happy ending you know if that doesn't uh, show some of the angst as well and we're gonna warp through i mean this is becoming a clean run nice shot there taking this guy out nice shot open the door Boosted towards the door. Nice bug throw. Hostage escape. So at least one hostage escape. Not bad. Okay, open the door. Bingo, bango. Take this guy out. 
bomb diffuser. Squeeze through. Hostage escaped. Another hostage escaped. I kind of pushed him out of the way, though. Kind of weird. Another one escaped. And the cinema. Oh my god, it's amazing. It's truly amazing. It's frigate double agent 110 okay so i improved my pb with that route that's not so bad um but the next day i was like you know what forget about it let's just <laughs> i mean like what geez okay so i guess at this point i'm trying a a newer strategy it's like, it's like secret agent style. Okay, let's see what happens here. It's starting out, you do the bug throw right away. <laughs> this one does not seem like it's going to necessarily... Uh, this one doesn't seem that logical of a route, we'll say. Could it complete? I guess it could. I guess it could. I mean, let's see what happens. I guess this run, well, okay, here we go. Warp the door. Run through here, okay, let's see. Oh, there's three, go yeah, remember the three guards in this room now, because I didn't come the other way and shoot a bunch of times. Diffuse the, oh, there's one escaping. Down the stairs. Hostage escaped. The cinema. Oh my god, what is it? Frigate 00107! It's truly amazing. Frigate 00107. Um, if you couldn't pick up on it, both these runs are fake. They're spliced. I did not get the untied Frigate Double O Agent 107. It was a lie. It was almost immediately found out because, like, literally immediately found out because the strategy is way too wacky. There's n not enough time for that hostage to escape, really. Like, he might barely be able to escape in theory, but combine it with the fact that I had just posted a 110, like, the day before, and, you know, the way I was acting at the time, and I also posted a frigate Secret Agent 101, at the time, um, yeah, it was it was pretty obvious that um, it was all fake. It was all a lie. Now, I actually noticed this. Look, I was so I was so bad at splicing and video editing back then. There's actually this frame in the 110. Okay, it's like it's like comical, right? There's this frame. Where you can clearly see it say mission status like 130, best time 111, right? Like I missed cropping out a frame that like clearly tells that it was spliced, right? Like this, these weren't high effort splices. These were just me being an idiot, um, not knowing how to handle my frustration and taking it out on the community. And even then, I would be like, you know, what, what, literally within the day, it was like, okay, these are fake. And I'm like, yeah, like, F you guys. I hate you. I hate everyone. Um, you know, this is ruining my life. F off. And I was, you know, I, I admitted to all these splices. There were a couple other PBs as well uh, outside of the, you know, and you go, you go full, you go full out there. It wasn't only, it was Frigate Secret Agent, Frigate Agent, a couple runs on Double O Agent. Because once Pandora's box is open, of course you're gonna, you're just gonna roll with it. And that's what I did. It's like once the first one's out there, it's like, well, now I'm, I've made the mistake. Why not take it as, as, as far as you can? Obviously, it's a very toxic, very degenerate mindset that you don't want to be in. But that was where I was at the time. And... Yeah, I basically blew up, left the community for two months. The story of my return to the community is told in the Silo Double O Agent episode, Remember Me. That one's a, a good episode, um, so you can check that one out about the return. 
Um, but hey, it took me some time. I deserved to kind of get exiled from the community for a couple months. There was some talk about like banning me from the rankings. Um, didn't end up happening. I mean, no one had really ever been banned from the community for faking runs at that time. And you know, we're in an era where it's not uncommon. No one had done it to this level yet. Um, but I mean, even the silo double O run I show, you know, there's a Jimbo Game Shark run, and there's other players who claimed the times they never got. Um, there were guys who photoshopped the end screens when only end screens were acceptable proof, and so on. Um, obviously, it's not to minimize or excuse splicing runs. Don't splice runs, kids. It's unacceptable. But that's the truth, and that's what's ha that that's what happened. And yeah, so I would leave for about two months. I would come back uh, with the Silo Double O Remember Me video. And that was that saga in the Elite community at the time, 2007. So if we look at the World Rankings at the end of 2007, well, no, I don't have any untides on Frigate. A still has the 108 on Frigate. And even if we look in May 2009, Ace still has the 108 untied on Frig. I mean, Ace was pretty damn good at the game. And I mean, it shows you how good that 108 is. Um, I'm probably 110s, one, I mean, remember, he had 108 when the record was 111. So I don't even know if anyone had 109 or 110 in the meantime. I know at least one or two guys got 110 eventually, but I'm not sure if they did by this point mid 2009. But there was another run that would happen in May 2009 by our pal Dave Clemens. Let's take a look, shall we? Now, I think by this point it's been determined that the route... See, what is so silly is we can now see Clemens is using the the Brandon Sanford route. Okay, he's going to go bust in there. The, the same route that Alex Anderson pioneered, but then skip the engine guard. And he's going to use this around this run. It's basically been determined that I was, I was wrong about the engine room actually saving time or being uh, or being more consistent with the hostages in which case it would save your real time because you would get a time faster than than this other way but it seemed like for whatever it, you it, i think it's because when you use that route guards clog up the stairs from which the engine go hostage escapes and so it doesn't it works in theory but not like that well in practice so i got a 111 legit that way Ace got a 108 legit that way, but Clemens would show up in May 2009 and use the the Bix route and get Frigate Double O Agent 107. A new one tied. Legit, legit. Um, you can even see, if you see A on screen, that's legit. It's almost impossible to fake a on screen like you'd have to fake every single pixel you know i mean look at all these frames where you would have to perfectly photoshop that objective a complete on screen like that's pretty tough to do especially back you know in that in that era whereas for example on this fake 110 all i had to do was make a photoshop end screen and tack it on right so if a's on screen you can pretty you can be pretty confident that it's a it's a real run not a hundred percent you know uh, foolproof i'm sure i'm sure there's some genius video editors who could pull it off but yeah 107 by clemens amazing run uh and finally it would it would topple aces 108 and it would show that hey this going into the basement strategy isn't maybe the best strategy for frick double o maybe we should go on with this older strategy the luck-based variant, um, and it worked out for Clem, so pretty wild stuff. He got that in May 09, and still by the beginning of 2011, it's still untied, so it's a good time. It's a very, very good time. 
But along would come someone else. Along would come a gentleman by the name of Henning Blom, a very, very talented Goldeneye player. Henning Blom. Now, the reason that Frigate, like I said, is so exciting is because, like, every single run, you might be able to get it world record pace. You might be able to get that 107 um, every every single run. Could be. And then if you get the 1-500 luck, you're going to get a world record. And so that's pretty exciting. And so let's see what happens on this Henning, Henning 107. Okay. Oh my. Oh, guard pulls a grenade. Sometimes that can be useful because he can clear out guards who would otherwise get in the way of the hostages on their paths to escaping the boat. Chucks the tracker bug, opens the door, comes out here, opens the door, headshot, beautiful headshot, diffuse. Definitely looks like it's 107 pace. Okay. Hostage escaped. This could be it. In the boat and... Huh. Frigate Double O Agent 107 by Henning. Pretty good run. January 17, 2011. Two days later, actually five days later, he would get this run. This run, I mean, this is a historic run, a pivotal run in elite history. And we've got to dedicate this speed run to our speed lore champion, Mr. Moxie. Thank you for supporting speed lore on Patreon. I know you love these crazy unorthodox runs. So let's, let's take a look. January 22nd, 2011. Henning Blom again. Strafing through the stairs. Bingo Bango takes that guy out. At this point in my life, I was kind of not that active in the community. Um, you know, like I said, I was kind of holding on by a... You know, I was, I was on the edge for the past couple years. And so I'd found, you know, other hobbies other than speed running. I was still kind of dabbling in it, but not that much. And so I never really watched... Henning's runs as they happened. It wouldn't be till much later. And uh, here we go. I was most at that point in my life. I was just mostly troll posting about sports online. I think back in the you know crazy glory days of 2010, 2011. Uh, but this run by Henning is is shaping up pretty nicely. Hostage escape. Okay, that's a good sign. So that hostage got injured in his hand. Interesting. He. Diffuses the bomb. Hostage escaped. And, oh. Ooh, the cinema came up. Unbelievable. And, uh, frigate double agent 106. A new untied world record. Beautiful and stunning, as far as I would say. Two days later. Now this is what really gets crazy, and it gets crazier in hindsight. Dave Clemens was like, oh man, I had 106, I had 107, and now Henning tied it, then beat it with 106, I want to get 106. So Dave Clemens would go on and play this run. It's going to be very similar. Again, you know, I... I uh, have to mute these last few runs they all have have music in them that's it's not too deep of a lore to, you know if the music has a deep lore to it i'll play it but um you know this has like born identity soundtrack or something you know good fitting fitting uh, song for an epic world record but you could see clem in the basement got hung up as he was trying to like leave the engine room so it's like does this indicate that like 105 104 might be possible with this strategy maybe and um Oh, look, this is a failed... Okay, this is a failed run by Clem, but I want to see what happens here. He failed the bug throw. I'm, I'm kind of glad we, we we're seeing a couple failed bug throw runs. Hostage released, hostage released. Um, okay, so nothing... 
he got hung up for quite a while. 106. 106, and he had that error in the basement. So let's watch this next run. Okay. No, d is not that rare, but in lore, failed runs are kind of rare. So, okay, there we go. Sh shooting down the stairs. Shooting once there. Shooting. Okay, very nice. He's go See, he's going for headshots there. That's like getting pretty gutsy, pretty advanced. There we go. Beautiful. Doesn't get hung up there. Uh, a little bit there, but like that's pretty solid. Okay. Ooh, that guard sidestepped. Headshot, nice. Headshot, well that was a really good one. Headshot, this is nice. Let's see what happens here. Tracker bug. Mind you, this is again two days after Henning posted his 108. Six. You want to start seeing hostages escape at this point in time. Okay, so Clem does also injure that hostage. Hostage escaped. Oh my god. <gasps> they escaped. It's amazing. Frigate double O agent 106. Wow. Pretty nice. Man, ooh, that's... Again, January 2011, these are getting to be quite nice runs. Wow. Only a few months later, after Henning and Clem had this wild back and forth on Frigate, and it was even more wild because on Secret Agent they had similar. Clem had 101, Henning would eventually beat it with one minute. You guys remember from the Caverns Double O Agent episode, uh, Cl uh, Clemens and Alex Anderson flew out to Sweden. They met up with Ilu there in the red and Henning uh, there um, in the black in Sweden. And Henning was telling Clem about all the epic uh, battles on Frigate he had and uh, why it was such a remarkable uh, back and forth they had on the level. So. You're kind of in person saying, oh man, they're kind of reflecting on on the rivalry they had on Frigate. Through 2011, those Frigate records would stay intact. 106, Henning and Clem. One minute on Secret Agent by Henning. By fall 2012, another guy would join them. Luke Pettit. Luke Pettit had been playing GoldenEye for two years, clearly. Um, Ten months and twelve days, and he finally got a world record. And what is interesting about this is Luke Pettit is like this frigate double-O gamer who... I mean, he's, he's a master of frigate. You know, unbelievably, he still has an untied on frigate secret agent, mind you. Um, but the guy's really good at Frigate, and it's, it's kind of strange because in his career he never got very many world records. Usually you would expect in 2012 guys to get, you know, Runway Agent 22 and Bunker 117 and so on as your first world record. You wouldn't expect someone's first world record to be Frigate 00106. That's like a bit wacky. But that was the case with Luke Pettit. He was a certainly a unique and special player in a lot of ways. And uh, yeah, again, just very similar the strategies now become refined. And um, there we go. You know what? Black and white videos, I think they still are allowed. A proof mod would, would know more. Oh, uh, look how early Objective A completed. Holy smokes. That Objective A completed at maybe 104 pace. Like, maybe this proves 104 is possible, because this is indeed Frigate 00106 in October 2012. Okay. Wow. Insane. Now, also in 2012, and this is kind of important. Actually, there's probably no more video of this. But Twitch streaming became a thing. Twitch streaming, people came along. It was pretty wild. 
Um, I mean, if you guys were around in fall 2012, it was uh, it, uncharted territory. It was pretty wild to see all this uh, remarkable streams for the first time ever. You know, it was pretty cool stuff. And the chat on Twitch, for the first time, kind of gave us this kind of nebulous outlet where you could write something in chat and it wasn't like as permanent, we'll say, as the forums. So one night, Twitch is, is coming around and I'm kind of getting back into things. I, you know, like I said, I've kind of been away for a couple of years figuring out life and so on, as you do in your early 20s. Um, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. Twitch draws me back to the community. And for the first time ever, I'm kind of watching these Henning runs a bit more. I mean, I'm watching, I'm catching up on untitled records that I missed over the past two years. And something catches my eye about this, this Henning run. He goes into the boat with unarmed. Bond is seen putting away a D5K in the cinema on his secret agent run, or, or sorry, on his, that was, was 107, double O. On his double O, 106, we see more of the same. He goes into the boat with unarmed, and he puts away a D5K or a Phantom. Let's see Clemens on Clemens's run, okay, he goes into the boat with unarmed, and Bond puts away a PP7. On Luke Pettit's run, Bond goes into the boat with a D5K, and he puts away a D5K. Let's keep watching. Let's watch Aces 108. On Aces 108, Bond goes into the boat unarmed, and he puts away a PP7. The conclusion is this. Bond will put away whatever the last weapon he... Whatever weapon you enter the boat, Bond will put away that weapon in the cutscene. If you enter with unarmed, he will put away the PP7. This is unchangeable. This is always true, no matter what. Henning didn't know this. So, on Henning's runs, Bond enters the boat unarmed. He should put away the PP7, but he puts away a D5K. This is 100% irrefutable proof that Henning's runs are spliced. Runs that have been on the rankings for nearly two years by this point. Henning. November 18, 2012. Frigate Cinema Problem. Are my runs real or not? That's the question for everyone right now. Yes, they are real. They happened. I have no reason to lie about this. But why did the game show the Phantom Cinema for 1 minute, 106, and 107? This is very interesting how this happened because it should have not. I also can't redo this myself on this very cart where I got those world records. So is my cart bugged? If so, why did it bug on those three runs? I do not have originals left, so this whole thing sucks. I guess the times will be taken down unless someone can find a reason why that happened, and I just have to suck it up. I hope some TAS people could take a look into this for some answer to justify my world records, and if nothing, there's not much I can do with this. It's up to the community to decide what happens. I've never faked any run whatsoever. I do not own a Game Shark or anything like that. Etc. Etc. I say, look, um, I know it better than everyone else, and this is this is fake. This is you know you, you'll remember, and this is where like the speed lore episodes blend together. On the Depot Double O episode, he got forty seven Double O untied there, but he pressed B on the end screen. This was only a couple days before, and so that seemed very sketchy. And that also led people to be like, hmm, what's going on with Henning here? This is this is a bit strange, isn't it? <laughs> that was, in fact, getting that 47 pressing B is what 
caused me to have a second look at his frigate runs. They kind of caught my eye a few weeks earlier. I didn't think too much of it. And then Henning pressing me on the depot end screen caused me to take a second look. And, um, yeah, it's... Anyways, Kara Thorne says, This topic reminds me of that horrible, fake vid Goose made that was obviously so fake, I can still lol about it. I'm glad, I'm glad he can lol about it. I mean, pretty bad. Jimbo is in here trying to give some uh, heresy that you can press A at the last possible frame to bring the Phantom out. Um, that's not true. We tried it. We tried it. And then it looks like about a day later, the next morning, Henning says, yes, I faked those runs. The 107 ones are faked using a Game Shark. The end screens are perfect because I killed the amount of guards needed with the amount of headshots, limb hits, everything else. I mean, that takes a skill to, to make a perfect end screen by playing out a similar run. He says, my real PB is 108. I never made a video of it. My best actual time is 111. And then he goes on to say some other runs are real, but they weren't. The thread devolves. I mean, Clemens, unbelievable. Can't put into words how sad and disappointed this has made me. I trust you as a good friend. I remember in Sweden, you talked about how epic getting Frigate one minute was. However, you still deserve your times in the ranking since all the others are obviously real. And, uh, I mean, there is a reasonable point to that. No one else had been removed for faking times before. Um, what's the correct move? What's the move? Hard to say. Eventually, Henning would sort of kind of be in this kind of frozen purgatory to the end of the year. We would decide to bring in new rules where you would have to basically new rules that were zero tolerance um, for faking from the beginning of 2013 forward. At that point, anyone caught faking again would be permanently banned. That was that was the rule. We'll give Henning the clemency, the grace. Um, we kind of reconciled that there had been many, many fakes in the past, obviously mine included, and it wouldn't be fair to ban Henning for that. So let's, you know what, atone for our mistakes, acknowledge our mistakes, draw a line in the sand, and say moving forward there will be no more fakes. Everyone seemed to agree to this. 2013 came, and um, Henning, times that he denied were fake in that original thread, were later proven to be fake again. And now that there was a zero tolerance policy, he was banned from the GoldenEye rankings. And that is, once again, the story of Henning. Uh, told, once again, 33 episodes later after the original Speed Lord, where we went over that in detail. It is a sad story, honestly. I do feel bad for the guy. Again, maybe to some effect, it was for the best for him. As far as I know, I don't... I mean, people kind of hear bits and pieces. He seems to be doing well now, which is good. I mean, I would even admit that when I faked runs in 07, I was doing it in hopes to be banned from the community. So that, you know, you have this tumultuous relationship with speedrunning. You feel like you're addicted, you love it, it's the only thing you really enjoy, but yet you feel like it's destroying your life because back then especially, there was nothing to get out of it. Uh, you weren't making money, you weren't gaining a Twitch following, you weren't gaining a YouTube following. It was just you and the screen. There was nothing to gain out of it. And so it felt like it was bringing you down, and you wanted to cut it out of your life so you could move on and do other things. But you don't know how. You don't have the maturity, the emotional capability to cut out something that you love, that you feel is damaging you. And so I acted in that way to cheat in hopes to get banned. I didn't get banned, and now I'm here, for better or worse. Um, Henning did get banned. It played a little bit differently for him. And I mean, it's like, how do you kind of toggle the two? Um, I had a similar reaction to Henning, right? I kind of said, okay, F it, you know, these times are fake. 
Um, see you later, guys. Although Henning had more fakes, and he, he kept covering and kept covering and kept covering. It, in summer 2013, he would, he would admit to faking statue runs um, as well as full game runs, secret agent uh, real-time attack runs, and that was kind of the final nail in the coffin for him on the rankings. Um, so, I mean, is his situation and my situation different? I mean, that's up to you, I guess. I, I can't really be the judge of that, but uh, crazy history. It is what it is. We are where we are now, and um, that's life, I guess. Some maybe luck, maybe fate, maybe destiny, but that's where we are. There are times when I think, you know, seven years later, should we unban Henning and, and bring him back? It would be kind of fun for the novelty. I obviously do think seven years later he probably learned his his lesson. Um, would he even care to or want to is another question entirely, you know? It's like, I kind of imagine, like, Henning in a way was kind of like the Lance Armstrong. He faked, denied it, kept denying it, kept denying it, admitted a little bit, kept denying it until it was just blown wide open. Whereas, you know, I would be maybe someone who cheated one year at the Tour de France and admittedly was like, yeah, I cheated, sorry guys. Uh, F you and and kind of it's it's hard to know it's it's hard to know how things are um, but hey that's the history that's the past and it's all out there now and I guess everyone who ever comes across these stories in the future will be the judge um, of what was right and wrong and what was just and unjust we know what was wrong for sure but What's just and unjust is another question unto itself. Of course, anytime there is some sort of trolly situation in the community, dramatic situation in the community, there is a good bit of fun and trollery and, and mischief. Now, this is a frigate double O run. It is fake. It is obviously fake. It is intentionally fake. I thought at first that this was a run made in response to Henning's fakes being outed. But it actually wasn't. This run was made in response to the circuit board strategy fiasco a couple months earlier. Another insane part of elite lore and history. Um, let's just watch. This is a hilarious run by Clemens. One of my favorite, obviously fake runs. Free at double O. The world record is, um, again, I guess, Clem's 106. Okay. S s see if you can spot the splice, okay? Be attentive and see if you can spot it. Pay close attention. Oh, oh my god. It's escaped. It's amazing. I can't believe they escaped. <laughs> oh my god, that is insane. <laughs> Well, wow, frigate 102, it's amazing. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously fake. He played over a frigate double O run, spliced an agent ending so that the cinema would come up in a 102 on agent. Pretty funny. Um, 
where, you know, where, where do we view this? A run that was never claimed to be legitimate, nor tried to be passed off as legitimate. So just a fun fake. Uh, where, on the on the the moral scale, where do we rank this? It's you know, it's. I think it's funny. I think it's harmless, but others might not. I made a similar splice, an obviously fake one. Um, in November 2012, this was again done, this was done to mock Henning. I mean, my, you know, like I said, things can get kind of troll and silly. This is an alleged frigate 23. <laughs> um, I, I wrote that it's done by our pal Zenith Legend, who is actually, uh, you know, it's like an alt alias, an old alt alias of mine. Let's, let's care, let's, let's look. <gasps> oh my god, they escaped. It's amazing. I can't believe they escaped. Holy sh 23. It's literally just Wouter's 23 end screen. And obviously the gag here is that, um... You leave unarmed, and he's putting away, you know, a rocket launcher in the cutscene. So, yeah, that was, that was, you know, me taking the trollery to the maximum. Yeah, good, good times, putting the rocket launcher. But hey, after all was said and done, in November, December 2012 to end the year, well, I mean, maybe the year wasn't done yet. Just to complicate things even further, Luke Pettit would go on and get this run in November 2012. And again, like, given all that had been going on, combined with the fact, I mean, look at Pettit going for headshots. Like, this is very skilled. Very, very skilled. Come out with the fact that Pettit never really had any real records before, only frigate. Uh, 106. It's like, obviously people are at least skeptical that someone who isn't an overall well-rounded player could be this good at frigate. He's going auto-aim off, going for headshots, pretty ballsy, pretty gutsy. Beautiful, uh, beautiful throw. Bingo, bango, headshot. Bomb diffuser. Oh, he opens the door for the for the hostage. Very clever thinking. Hush escaped. Oh my god. He waited for the hostages to escape and he didn't need to. That is a tactic you might see. Frigate 00105, a new one tied world record by Luke Pettit. Yeah, the idea is that like let's say he, let's say he was on like 101 pace, like something insane. And he wants 105 the untied, he could go down here, wait 3 seconds, then get in the boat, but like he waits no. He could have ran right into the boat. We're still sort of torn. It's like if he ran right into the boat, would this have completed? I think probably. Would it have been 104? Oh, it definitely would have completed if he ran right into the boat. But, like would it have been enough for 104? Maybe, maybe not. Really tough to know. Really tough to know if it would have been 104. But this definitely suggests 104 is possible, I would say. So good, you know, wow. But of course, because we were so kind of like freaked out, we asked him to do extra due diligence in proving that the run was real. And so he, he went and showed us his VHS tape with the run on it. And I think it's this one here. He doesn't really give any commentary towards until the end, so we'll see what he says about it once the run show. And this kind of furthermore uh, helps prove that it's real by showing a, a video of it. Like, by showing the VHS... It means, like, you know, if Henning were to do this with his fakes, he would have to have, like, spliced it, then recorded the spliced DVD onto a VHS tape and showed it that way. It adds, like, a elements of challenge to it. 
So this did go on to show extra legitimacy that we were hoping for from Luke Pettit here on his 105. Alright, so obviously that's not conclusive proof, but hopefully it helps a bit. Oh, don't do that opening the door thing that I did, by the way. <clears throat> I tested it like 10 times, and yeah, it only helped once. So even even if that last hostage does get stuck a lot, he can st he'll, st he'll still escape most of the time. It needs to get stuck a serious amount for it to, to help. So it's not really worth it. Only loses a second, but it's not too bad. But it's, it's it's not worth it really. So there you go. Hopefully that helps a bit. If anybody wants this video in Powerland, you know they can have it. Maybe capture it for me. Capture it yourself, you cheap bastard. <laughs> or maybe I will. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it then. All right, safe. Yeah, I mean that's. Uh... Look, that's pretty good. I mean, he he did go the extra mile to to show that his 105 was legit. So, respect to Luke Pettit for doing that. And um, good insight there on the last hostage opening the door. It, it was it was clever for him to try it, uh, but he says that ultimately it's not really worth doing. And like again, that's I mean, if we look at the run, geez, right? Imagine now. Obviously, it's not as fast of a, a route leaving here. So, like, let's say he didn't open that door. He just left immediately and ran right in the boat. Like, could he pace 103 fails on Frigate 00? Maybe he could. So, Luke Pettit is really elevating the way we play Frigate 00. Now it's time to put on our thinking caps and learn a bit, a little bit. A uh, beautiful post by Henrik here. Frigate hostages. There are a total of six hostages in Frigate, and in order to complete objective A, two, four, or five of them has to escape. Double O, it's five. Basically explains a lot of what I explained earlier, but this image is key. So, there are six total escape points. Henrik corrected me on this earlier in the episode. Six escape points. So, think about the way we play Frig 00. We come in here, and we release, you come up here, and we release two hostages in here. Very early in the level. These two will probably almost always escape, okay? Then you go into the basement, and you release two more. The third one we release He's kind of midway up the ship. He can probably hit maybe half the escape points by the time you get back to the boat. The slowest one, though, the one who I've talked about who runs all the way down the engine room and around, there's only one escape point that he can get to that's going to be fast enough for him to escape. And then also, the bridge hostage, the final one, only this number two bridge hostage location he can escape. So... Henrik said he has to go through this door, the door that Pettit opened, and he's close enough to this two despawn point that he can despawn there. So it's like, already you're thinking there's five hostages you need out. Two of them are one in six to escape. That's one in 36. One of them is maybe one in two, one in three. So now we're up to one in 70. And then it gets further complicated by all sorts of stuff because... The game determines where it's going to send the hostages, the random luck, but then it can change. It can change because if you end up looking in the direction of hostages, it, it messes them up kind of severely. And, okay, let's check this out here. This is a run that I, I played out uh, just to kind of demonstrate this. So I failed the bug here. We're going to get the hostages to complete. But what you'll see is like when I'm when you when you bump into hostages late or when you look at them the wrong way, like we can we can definitely see that over in this range, 
where we're looking now. That is that is a despawn point, okay? There's a hostage running to that point, but like because I'm looking over at him, because I bumped into him, he changed his mind. So instead of running to that despawn point despawning, he's now gonna find a different point to despawn. Now that guy goes and despawns there because like we never made eye contact. That one will go around to that other side and despawn right about now. But like you can see how bumping in the way of the hostages can mess them up. Henrik now goes on to write that the odds of the perfect hostages, I think he writes this here, are, let me see, oh, here, putting this all together, chance of perfect hostages on agent, 1 in 40, on secret agent, 1 in 1677, chances of perfect hostages on double agent, 1 in 10,000, 737. This doesn't account for the hostage taker's death animations, escape times, or etc, etc, etc. Um, you know, I go on, like, okay, 1 in 10,000, are you kidding me? Like, okay, yikes. Are they really 1 in 10,000? <laughs> Probably not, but it's more or less impossible to find a solid number because there's so many it, it's not just they pick up one of the six points there's so much more to it it's where you look can affect if they're going to change their mind and do a different route where guards are on the level which is like a multi rng based thing uh the hostages can bump into the guards and change their minds where you are on the frigate in relation to the hostages can affect them Grenades going off can affect them. Death animations can affect them. Actually, one thing that is really notable on Henning's 107 fake run is that we can see this hostage taker has a choking death. And so when he leaves this room, the hostage is barely out of this room. And this is another tell that, I mean, I think Clemens or someone said he noticed that the hostage is... Uh, you're barely leaving this room now. This is like another added element to suspicion. If we look at Clemens's 106, that same hostage will be way further along uh, by the time Clemens leaves this room. You can't okay. You can't even see him because he's turned around. The hostage is already like down the stairs, um, well on. His, he's like five seconds ahead of Henning's version of the fence. So like. These are little luck elements that matter too. And as a result, there's just no possible way to estimate the actual odds of hostages completing on Frigate Double O Agent. Um, it's just chaos. On top of this, uh, Henrik makes a big long post about, um, for example, on Agent, you think that this chair gets in the way, but in reality, the hostages unload the chair they go through the chair it's guards who get in the in the way and um there's a whole series of of loading and unloading guards that affects and gives you better chances of completion now keep in mind it's like you could go out of your way to look certain directions and kill certain guards and give yourself a better chance of completion However, that wastes time. And given that Luke Pettit and Clemens have achieved times of 105 and 106 already, um, that's too fast to go out of your way and do all sorts of trickery. So all you can do from this point on is play the level and pray to the god of speedrunning, RNG, that you will complete a run. That's all you can do. In an alternate reality where everyone was bad at the game and the world record was like two minutes, um, you could go through and play very intentionally, eliminate certain guards to clear the path for the hostages, so that way you're giving them the best chance of completing. But since the record's 105, you can't do that. You just have to go for it and pray to RNG that they'll escape. 
And uh, that's a lesson for all of us. Wow. So, to start January 2014, the world records on Frigate, still 105 by Luke Pettit. Okay. Well, let's watch a couple of runs that aren't world record runs. Uh, one of them is this good old classic by me. Let's take a look. Statement on my part, but I don't think so. Dude, that was a really f good run too. And it might barely not be 110 pace. Ah, oh, f. Oh, god damn it. The hostages in the basement were making really good progress, and now the run's over. That sucks, dude. Like, both the hostages were in the room I pipe warped into, and that means they both had a really good shot at. So now we're on the Japanese version. This is the first time we're seeing the Japanese version. It's very widespread now, um, because it has better auto aim and better advantages on some levels. This symbol is the only Japanese symbol I know. It means exit or escape. So this is the message for hostage escaped. There's another similar message, which is hostage released. And there's one that is one character longer, which is hostage executed. You don't want to see that one. Escaping. And as a result, this could have been the run. And now it's not. Like, watch, Objective A might complete here. It really might. That one's released. No. Now, for epic context, this is when I used to dedicate runs to anyone who subscribed. So, I had 111 still. We watched my 111. This one was dedicated to Krishenko, who subscribed, and Red Rhythm. Krishenko... That night, I was playing Mario Golf for, you know, three, four hours. Um, I wasn't streaming that much. At this time, it was 2015. Um, you know, I've talked, in, I think, in Silo's Secret Agent why I wasn't really streaming at that time. That Spoodler episode. But I was streaming that night, February 2015, and uh, Mario Golf, just kind of hanging out, having an okay time. Krasenko was like, I want you to play... Frigate double O. Just do one run. Just do one run. Just play. And I've been playing for like maybe five minutes on Frigate double O just now. Just to end, just to appease him. Sometimes you get viewers in chat who are, you know, like, do this. And you're like, you know what? He was a longtime viewer, uh, subscriber. I figured, okay, I'll appease Chris Senko. I'll play Frigate double O a couple runs. <sighs> this is evidence, maybe, that the god RNG is real and, uh, or maybe not. Mate. Mate. So I go for the engine room hostage just to increase my odds of completion. Mate. Because I knew that I could get better than 111 pace with that still. So I could get 110, 109 with that kill. If I skipped him, I could get 107, 106. You know, almost the 105 world record. And even I got stuck in that guard there, so. This could be it. You want to see the hostage escape start appearing. Got the throw. There's one. This- Oh my god, one hostage escaped already. Holy sh- Holy f this could be it. Two hostages escaped, this is insane. I'm not even joking. I'm not joking, but I am hyping it up a bit because I'm- It's part of streaming. This is actually insane. Come on. Three more. Come on! Oh my f god, he completed! <laughs> what is it? Oh yeah, baby! Yes! 
Kruseiko! You're a fucking legend, dude! Oh my god! Kruseiko! Fucking told me to play the level! Oh my fucking god, dude! Yes! Holy f That was one of the most insane PBs I've ever gotten. Because, like... <sighs> was playing Mario Golf all night, and Chris Senko all night's like, play, play Frigate Double O. Do it. That was f***ing insane. That was destiny. Krishsenko was destined to be in this chat room and tell me to play friggin' double O and guide me to this 109. Yeah, he gets mod immediately. I I I can't believe that. Wow, what an insane video. Um that was a good time. I mean that was like a spiritual experience, honestly. Nothing else can explain. You know, again, I mean, I played so many hours. I went into great detail earlier about how I wanted to beat the 111. I thought I had a strategy that uh, could do it. Ace would use it to get 108 and put it out of reach. It's weird how things work. Obviously, 109, a PB, isn't as cool as an untitled record. Um, but, hey, it's it's not so bad. It's not so bad. I was pretty happy, and it was a really fun moment on streaming. One of one of uh, the funnest one one moment that I look back fondly upon for sure. So, <laughs> Krasenko, if you see this one day, uh, thanks again. You know, five and a half years later, for the epic PB, <laughs> still my PB on Frigate Double O. Let's watch this interesting run. Jimbo, streaming, also notable. Let's yeah, take a look. So Jimbo is also doing what I did. Uh, he could probably beat his PB is like 113 or something. He could probably beat it by crouching, giving himself more chances at the hostages escaping. You know, freeing all six, only five of the sixty to complete. Could all six complete? Maybe. Kind of a wacky couple rooms there. Oh, cloak. One escaped. At least one escaped. Another one escaped. <laughs> Objective A. Completed. Already. <laughs> I think I choked 110. It's over. A came up like at 105 pace. I don't even know what to feel because I, I choked. I, okay, I, I'm happy. Hey, 92 point time. I tied Fanny. No more. No more time better than me. For, I don't even care. I don't know what to feel because I could have been 109 or something. I looked bottom left and I saw A up before I even hit the. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's one of the earliest A completes ever. It's like, there's no way that hostage escaped. It's the other five hostages escaped. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's, it's actually inexplicable. I mean, that was a remarkable run by, by Jimbo. Wow. This next run happened uh, a, 
a little bit later in 2015, July 10th. This run is pretty remarkable, pretty historic. Uh, we got a cool reaction. This one's dedicated to our Speedlore champion, Jazz Apples. Thanks for supporting Speedlore on Patreon. Let's watch some vintage Dave Clemens. Well, so it's a good question, uncontainable. But it's like, yes. However, might you then be too fast to... Um, the hostages wouldn't escape. Like, it, it would only work if you skipped him completely and all the other five hostages escaped perfectly. So, like, you'd be having to rely on even more insane luck. Way more insane luck than usual, which is already insane. But, like, in theory, yes. Oh, man, that was that was quite a stuck on this Clemens run. But he's flying through the frigate, man. He is just... He's just moving fast. I wonder if we can hear anything he says. Like, this is... This is some... It sounds like we're in a hurricane. Like, in theory, you could skip this last hostage, just defuse the bomb, and, uh... Or he thinks it's 106. Oh my god! Holy sh Oh my god! Holy sh Oh my god, I got it! I f***ing got it! I f***ing got it, dude! I completed a run! Holy sh <laughs> Oh my god! I got it, dude. Pretty cool run by uh, by Clemens there. He tied Luke Pettit's 105. That's a big deal. Um, as much as you might think, oh, it's like luck-based, right? Like, oh, you're just lucky if you get the record. It's not necessarily true. I always like to say that, like, each run to the end is like getting, like, a lottery ticket, right? So the more tickets you get, and this is true within one individual lottery, the more tickets you get, the more chances you have to win, right? And so, if you're only getting one run to the end every hour at 110 pace, odds are you're not going to get the world record. But if you're getting 105 to the end every single time over and over again, you know, every run, 20 per hour, you're increasing the chances that one of them will complete and it'll be a 105, right? So consistency helps um, with the luck. So luck-based runs do reward skill they reward consistency and that's obviously what clemens was a was a uh, benefactor of here so beneficiary whatever okay here's the opposite this is swiss dan swisso parker really good player top guy uh this is july uh, 2016 um a full year later the record's still 105 by clem and luke pettit This run's looking really, really good, really fly. And again, we're going to see it in a little bit in the next segment. How many runs you fail. But, like, you just need to get run and run and run to the end to um, hope one of the runs, the hostages complete. And everything else completes. So Dan Swisso Parker takes out the bug, throws it, it failed, it failed, he missed the helicopter. Surely this won't be the run where he gets the 1 in 10,000 luck of the hostages completing. Surely not. Oh, it was. Objective A in black text there is completed and it was a 104 
would have been an untied world record. Untied world record, failed bug throw. Uh, that is a tragedy. That's a tragedy. He actually had 117 as his PB, so he, he was like, that would have been a huge cut. I made this thread in 2017, just documenting all of the um, runs of 104, 105, 106 speed, and just to kind of get a gauge, like, okay, there's been there's been thousands of runs throughout GoldenEye history. How many of them? Because this is also a good way to figure out odds, is by, like, doing the math, studying, um, compiling the statistics, you know, compiling the data. You can figure out the odds that way as well. And so I documented here, like, nine runs of 106 or better speed, and two maybes, and... Um, yeah, so not much. Later down the thread, people love this graph. We're talking about it being lottery luck. I found this this uh, chart posted by the New York Times. I think about winning the Hamilton lottery. Let's see, where's this chart here? Here it is. Okay. <laughs> Your odds of, and I edited it, completing frigate double O agent. Okay. Being on The Price is Right, 36 to 1. Being Born a Twin, 90 to 1. Dating a Millionaire, 215 to 1. Winning the Hamilton Lottery, 476 to 1. Uh, being Born with 11 Fingers or Toes, 500 to 1. Uh, Leicester City winning the Premier League, 5,000 to 1. Being Struck by Lightning, 12,000 to 1. Uh, spotting a UFO, 3 million. Winning the actual lottery, 40 million. Frigate 00104 Hostages, 45 billion to one yep yep there you go that's the chart the chart says it that's the odds of course you know it is always fun to kind of have some fun and a bit of trollery uh, even amidst you know actually trying to compile the data and figure things out <laughs> um but yeah so here's a run by oscar p from around the same time february 2017 No, the bar... Well, so that's why the bar does the swiggly thing at the end. Anyways, um... So, Oscar P. This is gonna be interesting. He throws the bug. Dude, that bug throw... That He got screwed. That bug throw should have completed. Let's see here. Hostages completed at the, oh my god, at the top of the ramp. He quits out, it's 108? So that, those hostages completed at 104 or 105 pace. I mean, those were some really fast hostages. But Oscar... Uh, would be un undeterred, undeterred, and he would keep playing despite this. I mean, it feels bad. I mean, think about it. Henrik says one in ten thousand. Uh, I say one in forty-five billion. It's probably more like one in five hundred, one in a thousand to get the one hundred and four pay sausages. But it obviously, feels quite bad for poor Oscar to have gotten that. You know, one in however many hostages at, on a failed run. Same thing happened to Swisso. Dan Swisso Parker. Feels bad, man. Okay, nice shots. Good bug throw. He completed it, thankfully. Here we go. Going for it. Good diffuse down the stairs. One's out. Oh, a oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, 
Okay, 109, please. He wanted 109, it was 110. What the Lord RNG taketh, he also taketh away. Tough luck for uh, Oscar, but I mean, hey, look, we know now the record's at least 105. The 110, it's still worth 77 points. Uh, still a top 21 time on the stage. It's, you know, it's not so bad. Especially for Oscar, he's, he's, um, oh, he's ranked 26, so it's around his, it's around his, his rank, so good time. You're always happening at completion, that's for sure. And let's see here, so yeah, at the end of 2017, still, Pettit and Clemens have the 105. Now, I'm going to show one more video in this part. Uh, this one's a cool one, and then we're going to take in our quick, uh, break for part three of the episode. This is a Minnesota meet. A lot of the guys in Minnesota, um, Clem's from there, uh, Cook is from there, a boss, a bunch of guys are from Minnesota, and, um, you know, uh, Jimbo's not too far away in Wisconsin. They all like to meet up around Memorial Day, have a good old guys gaming session, and that's what they're doing in this video. Uh, we see Jimbo, Cook, Grav, and Clemens are playing Mario Party. Boss is playing... Frigate double O on another TV. Boss has 111 as his PB. Let's see if and uh, and what Boss could do. Actually, you know, Boss had 110, but you know what? Same thing. It's a fun... Frigate double O is a fun level of play in this environment because obviously it's really exciting when the hostages complete if they do. Um, so yeah, let's just watch what happens. And I mean, this is a kind of a special moment, cool moment. Let's dedicate this speedrun to our Speedlord champion, Dr. Slochter. Thanks for supporting Speedlore on Patreon. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, he's like, he's like around this This just picks a random winner. Yeah, it's just random. If you don't miss, it's random. I wonder if there's some kind of extra pursuit. I don't think so. Yeah. Mine, mine was perfect. That was a beautiful performance, but worried. Yeah. Right. So yeah, you see that? I don't know how it makes it. Bullshit. I, I feel like there's yeah, gotta be something to it. Yeah. yeah. Like, would they really make a game? It looks like a shit ton of minigames. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Green Circus Two Agent Forty Seven. There you go. Green wow. Statue Double O Two Eighteen. Damn it, it bops me. Jim Bob. Yep. Next to the champ. Bob's He's good, man. Jackstar15 with the follow. Thanks. Welcome to the channel. Donkey Kong gonna break the damn flute. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Too hot to touch is new. Wow. Well, hello and welcome. Nothing is too hot for me, don't worry. Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's so nice of you to stop by. Oh, I'm kneeling dead. 48 kneeling dead. Thank you. <laughs> God damn it, I'm the only one who has one thing yet. I haven't had it. Oh, oh someone's getting away there. What? Whoa! Oh my god, it completed! It's not a good run, but I don't care. I don't know what it is. Oh, wait. Yeah. Wait. Oh! 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 Oh!
Okay. Well, damn. Nice. Maybe I guess it wasn't stream, but maybe it was a point. <laughs> oh man. Was there a point? Oh, I mean, Jim was a point. So yeah. It was. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. Wow. Somebody oh has to God. clip that. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> it's like I saw two get away at the end, and then the last one get away at the end. Are we all ready? Yeah. That's a fucking yeah, good time. Like, I'm really shit. You want me to post that for you now? Or no? you see how fast that was? Doesn't that tie Ace? No, he yeah. has 108, I thought. Yeah, I popped Ace. Yeah. Tied Mark? Did I tie Mark? Or is he have 106? Wow. I, I tied Kirkness. Let me find it. I've got it right here. So Kirkness is swept. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. So Frigate 00 is only behind Luke and David. It ties, it ties Mark and Michael. It's not even. It beats Ace and Alex and Ryan and wow, oh my gosh, Wow, nice. You thought it was 108? It's a yeah, net, I did. It's how, a how many points did he get? Uh, it's right now it's 95. I mean, it's still it's 95. Really and I'm like stuck on the guy, like trying to get out. That's probably good. Oh, wow. I got stuck though. Sure yeah, you yeah. on the last guard. The last hostage. I yeah, got stuck. he made me lose so a point. He had 110. Sure a, if you get a kneeling death, you don't want to be. It's a best. seven point game. <laughs> oh, that's just crazy. Wow. I never play this crap. Let's watch a map. The world record. <laughs> it's world record or bust now. Dude, it's because I'm here. The fucking the Clemens. Yeah. Like, oh, but the geez. Minnesota right. Cricket curse right. is lifted too. Like my curse on this level. Swiss Aztec 00142 Rec Jim. I guess uh, the guys at whenever they were having the Minnesota meets, they would play Frigate the Below or Frigate Secret Agent. There is a really famous um, clip of Clemens. Uh, having the worst fail in Elite history. I would have shown this in the Frigate Secret Agent Speedler episode, where he gets a one-minute hostage completion, would have been untied, misses the <laughs> misses the bug, uh, misses the bomb defuse, which is really uncommon. Misses the bomb defuse. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty epic stuff from Boss. You can hear him at the very end say, oh, I, one's getting away there. Like, you can see two hostages escape, and he realizes it, and then in that moment, the cinema comes up, he's completed the run. It's pretty cool. It's so nice of you to stop by. Oh, kneeling death. 48 kneeling death. Bank <laughs> God damn it, kneeling one has one bank yet. I have an idea. Oh, well, someone get in the way there. What?! <laughs> yeah, pretty, uh, pretty wild, so... That is good stuff from uh, from boss cool run cool moment in elite history and uh, hey mid 2018 we've seen a lot of stuff in goldeneye now still 105 frigate double o by pettit and clemens and that takes us to the end of part two of tonight's speed lore Yes, so here we are in June 2018, in the final stretch of this Frigate Double O Agent speed lore, and a few interesting things would happen. One of them is that this player, Frost Hops, would join, believe it or not, Clemens and Pettit with a 105 of his own in September 2018. And Frost Tops, I mean, honestly, I don't, even, I don't even know where he's ranked. He's, like, obviously a good player to get free at 105. Um, but he's not a top 10 guy. Okay, he's ranked 43rd. So this was, like, a pretty decent grind. Uh, and some guys, they do grind and grind and grind. Um, it takes a long time. You know, I, I thought it'd be kind of a cool thing. I at least entertained the idea of, like, oh, man, what if I streamed Frigate Double O for a year straight to get an untied? Like, that'd be kind of cool. It would have been cool for sure. Never ended up happening. But these Frigate Double O grinds are pretty cool. And this one would pay off for Frost Tops for 105. And he may even go for lower um, in a little bit. Let's, let's see what happens here. So, okay, nice shots. Wow. So Frostops apparently recently got Caverns Agent 101. A good player, for sure. And, ooh, he's in. No, um... No A on screen. Hosh is completing the fade out.
forget double O. 105. Very, very nice. And check this out. This is kind of a more modern convention. On the end screen, he's going to hit reset to prove that there was no EverDrive or GameShark in his console. If there was, you would see now, instead of the GoldenEye screen come up, you would see the uh, Game Shark or EverDrive. And it's not a rule to do that um, yet. It might be in the future, but it's like it's a good extra step to kind of prove your runs legit um, because it does remove that possibility that you were using an EverDrive. Maybe you had it set to the hostages, always pick the best uh, escape path. Or, I mean, you could do some crazy stuff with EverDrive, I'm sure. So. Yeah, it was very close to being enforced. A uh, Grav was pushing for it in 2018. The reason it wasn't is because guys like me and Luke Scalars, who are kind of more boomers, we kind of like to leave the end screen up all day when we get a new PB and like bask in the glory of it. So that it, it's not it's an emotional argument. It's not a logical argument, but at the time, a lot of logical rules had been passed and we were kind of sick of it and so uh, we kind of held off on that rule but I agree I think it'll eventually become a rule uh, to to do the reset for now it's just a little bit of a bonus speaking of Luke Slars in October 2018 he would get this speedrun this speedrun is very very significant in the history of GoldenEye because with this speedrun, he would become the champion of the game. Now, what is definitely notable is, like, obviously Luke is a very good player, champion. He can probably get 105 pace runs pretty easily. He had 111 on the level. All he needed to gain a couple points for champion was a 109. He didn't need 105. So in order to play strategically, what you're going to see him do is get to the ending and wait and give the hostages a few extra seconds to complete. Obviously, this could be bad. This could result in him choking an untitled record. Like, let's say he waits and then they escape as he's waiting and he reacts slowly. Um, it could be bad, but his strategy played out perfectly for him. Gets to the end, waits. He knows exactly how many seconds to wait for 109. Jumps in. Bingo, bango. 109, he becomes Gold Knight Champion. Beautiful stuff. By Luke Scalars. Yeah, there was kind of an old meme. Um, I think we would make fun of Jimbo for doing it in like 2013. Always getting to the end and waiting by the boat for points. To get like a 113 or something like that. So, his famous quote on the rankings is that he waited by the boat for champion. Um, a pretty, I would say, admirable and reasonable thing to wait by the boat for. And yeah, he gave me an audio clip uh, for a video I made around that time uh, celebrating him becoming champion. So let's give it a listen, about one minute. Golden Knight champion doesn't mean being the most talented player. It also doesn't mean holding the most world records or having achieved the most world records in the past. Being champion of GoldenEye isn't determined by your untied count, career untied count, or the quality of your untieds, however that might be measured. GoldenEye champion is not about having the best total time, holding the longest standing untied, or having the most one-liners. Nor does it mean being the best agent, secret agent, or double O agent. What it means to be Golden Knight Champion is having the best, most well-rounded set of times on each of the game's 60 individual levels. This is easier said than done, as the Golden Knight leaderboard is a constantly, quickly evolving battlefield of new strategies, emerging in season talent, outstanding individual performances, occasional hoarding, and ample degeneracy. Becoming Golden Knight Champion requires you to face your fears, as well as to capitalize on your strengths. No single player has ever mastered all of the game's 60 levels, let alone at once. To swim against the tide, especially at the highest level and in the post-Twitch era, is not for the faint of heart. 
Amongst such incredible talent, I am proud to retake the throne as Gold Knight Champion in 2018. To finish, I'd like to share a quote by legendary skateboarder Rodney Mullen, where he talks about dealing with expectations. It puts a ceiling on your progress. You're blocked by your pride. To get good, you have to throw your board around and fall. Thanks for listening. Yeah, so cool little clip from uh, Luke there about becoming champion. And he's, it's true. You do have to face your fears. Obviously, I've never been champion. I peaked at number three. You do have to face um, the levels that you don't want to play. You know, maybe if I faced Train Double O um, back then, I could have gone a little bit further, right? And so it, it does take a lot. Um, there can only be one champion at a time, you know. And there's a lot of people who are, are gunning for it, so... Yeah, great stuff by Luke. He had briefly been champion before, uh, but he had retaken it then in 2018, and uh, pretty amazing stuff. He's since uh, lost it to uh, Ace and, and Wotus, and I think they've had a bit of a back and forth, um, but Wotus is on top right now. And Luke is still third, though, and he's over 100 points ahead of Clemens in fourth, and over 200 points ahead of Mark in fifth, so... Uh, Luke's going to hold on to a pretty strong position for for a little while. And even more epically, well, maybe not more epically than Champion, but in November 2018, about a month and a half later, he would get this speed run. It's a music run. He has a good music choice. I'm just going to let it play out. Let's uh, take a look and listen. Yeah, quite an interesting choice there from Luke, uh, Savage Garden, uh, I Know I Loved You Before I Met You, a classic song, a shout out to the 90s kids and 80s kids who remember it being used in the uh, one night television special, Who Wants to Marry a Millionaire, one of the biggest disasters of the 2000s, turn of the millennia era uh, TV crazy stuff but anyways yeah luke got 105 obviously very good player just a matter of getting the luck he went for it and he would finally uh, get the run 105 and uh he would join uh well he would join the lads he would join pettit clemens and frost tops with the 105 so i mean hey that's it's getting kind of crazy to think like oh this is a, a level clearly lower as possible. Pettit could have got 104. Um, just a matter of luck. Someone's got to break the tie, right? Frost Tops would try. We're going to watch five Frost Tops runs. Okay? Five Frost Tops runs. Obviously, he's getting pretty damn good at this, uh, at this game. Frost Tops was... I believe he was in one of the hordes, K4. Uh, at this point, he might have been uh, trying to get an untied for that horde. And uh, we'll see if it pans out. Oh. 
misses the pipe warp. Let's see, let's see how good this run can be, even with the missed, missed pipe warp. I mean, jeez. Okay. Completes the bug throw. This is looking decent. He's gonna go... F There's a lot of contention with the Phantom here. Some people think, like, if you use the Phantom, you're too... It, it's a louder weapon. Will it alert guards and so that hostage can't complete? There's... No... Oh, it didn't complete. 103 missed pipe warp. That's that's pretty epic. Uh, pretty fast run by Frostops there. Let's go to the next one. Yeah. Dude, hoarding is, is, is scary. I don't know if I would ever want to hoard an untied, certainly. Um, yeah, we do know that I did hoard a Streets 00 154 uh, world record untied sleigh, which is pretty cool. But I knew no one was going to no one was going to get one. 153 wasn't going to happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is contention over, like, mostly use the, the Silence D5K in the, in the uh, frigate. But that last bit, the Phantom, I think, does a little more damage, or it's like, maybe not more damage, but it feels more accurate. Uh, but it is louder, that's for sure, and it attracts more attention. So it's like, if you use the Phantom on various guards, are you reducing the chances the hostages is completing? Because, as we explained earlier, um, they're affected by where guards are in relation to them on the stage. This looks like the fastest run we've seen tonight. Great! Death animation on that hostage taker. Hostage complete. This one has a chance. Oh my god. Oh, 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 the... oh my god. Frigate 00102. Unbelievable. Frigate 102 failed. Uh, obviously. If it was completed, the 105 would say 102. Um, damn, that was a really good run. If only one or two more hostages completed, um, that could have been it. I honestly don't know what this one is. It's just titled GG. Okay. I think it's just, he says it's a wonky run. Okay, nice shot. Really nice headshot. Grenade went off early. That could be beneficial because... the hostages might have a clear path. Like, if none of the hostages died in the explosion, um, it can clear out the guards, which gives them a more direct path to the end. Oh, a sneeze? Dude, this one's crazy. It gets hit. He's down the stairs. Nails the bug throw from an awkward position. Dude, this run is wonky. Yeah, the first to provide proof uh, is in, in hordes. So if you hoard it and someone gets the time before you and submits it, they get credited with it first. Man, that one could have completed too. That was an insane 104. Uh, easily could have completed. That is a bit of a shame. There was a late there was a late hostage. Like I thought, man, I thought this has a chance. Like that one dis man, oh wow. Okay, uh, here's another one. Let's keep these let's keep these frost hops runs going. And I think this is kind of hopefully demonstrating to you um, what it takes to grind frigate double O agent. Like imagine the past three runs you've seen over and over and over for two three hours a night or more endlessly until you get a lucky completion. I mean, that's... can be painful. Can be painful. Nice, uh... Oh, good warp. Okay, let's see. Interesting explosion. Sometimes that can... It's, again, it's uncertain if that helps or not. Depends on if the hostage just dies in the explosion. But getting stuff to blow up can help clear your guards. So let's see... Hostage escaped. Oh. 
103 fail again. I mean, he seems convinced by the description that four hostages escaped there. I didn't quite see it. The escaped symbol was up at the end for like the whole duration of him um, leaving the last bomb defuse to the end. So that could imply that like three escaped there. I didn't see a completion before then though, but he, he seems to think four, four completed. Pretty wild. I mean, while wow, this run is looking good. Really, really good. Gets the uh, defuse. Oh man, that see that hostage was still there. Remember, like the Henning run. So this guy sadly is probably not going to complete. Um, and he got a kneeling death on that one hostage taker, which is like a one and a half second slower death. So like, really fast run. But again, you're clearly showing that it's not just the luck of the hostages picking the right escape points. There's another kneeling death. It's also the luck in the guards' death animations. Um, there's just so much luck involved. It, it's This is why, you know, people say RNG, RNG, and fair enough, but, like, there's more to it than RNG. Um, it goes beyond just a gnome on a bike generating numbers in the bottom of a well somewhere, you know? It, it's, uh, it's luck. There's so many more factors than just a lottery ball spinning around being picked from a big bubblegum machine, you know, so. All these great runs by Frosthoff's 102 to 104, none of them completed. You know, and imagine if luck was slightly different if Frosthoff's completed a 102, three second untied. It would be historic, but it just didn't happen his way. But it did happen the way for someone else. Remember a little while ago we watched a run by one Dan Swiss Parker and uh, it was a 104 where the hostages completed when he missed the bug throw. Could lightning strike twice? And if it did strike twice, could he capitalize on it and not choke the bug throw? Well, let's find out what happened to Swiss Parker on this speedrun in May 2019. His PB was 117. You know, Swiss, I don't know, oh wow, that was a really great, uh, that grenade went off early. That will help, I would say, clear out the guards. Really good. You know, I don't know Swiss all that well. I mean, we've always got along from our interactions, uh, but he's kind of more of a zoomer with the younger, cr younger crowd in the community. Uh, he was kind of always on Snapchat and memeing it up with the boys, and I was never really on that. Um, but a good lad, for sure, and a good player. He's gotten a couple of untieds in his Golden Knight career. And uh, the bug throws on. No, no one has escaped yet. Let's see. There's one. Okay, there's one. Let's see if let's see what happens. There's one. Um, okay. Another. Only two. Oh! Insane! Frigate Double O Agent 104. Untied world record by Dan Swiss Parker. That's a pretty, pretty remarkable world record. Uh, very nice stuff. Yeah, I mean, two or three must have escaped the last second there. Uh, very, very epic and remarkable. His other untied was on Cradle Double O in like the mad rush um, to get untieds with uh, with the tr with the Trev drone strat. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, pretty. This one is. St this one's still untied. I'll be. I'll, I'll just say that straight up. Dan Swiss Parker 104 is still untied, and that is basically the end of the speed lore. Like that's that's as deep as it goes. That's the story, of frigate agent, uh, frigate double O agent. I will show a few more runs just to kind of demonstrate once more the grind of frigate double O, but that's where it stacks up today. So Swiss. The king of Frigate Double O as it stands now, uh, could it change? Certainly it could, um, but it hasn't yet. I mean, that's the beauty in a way with Frigate Double O is like many players 
can pace 104. And like a flash of lightning, a run just could complete tomorrow. It totally could. Um, so you never know what will happen on this stage. Let's watch this Dynamics DJ. So he's grinding for a double O. He wants 118 as his goal. This was all done between like October and December 2019. Uh, he's 13 hours deep into the into his grind so far. We can see up there. So let's just let's just you know, you know what? Let's watch. Obviously, this is a newer player coming along, learning the stage. Okay, so he's not as refined as. Um, Frost hops and Swiss and so on. A bit of a stuck there. Um, you know, not quite handling the, the strafing as well, but there's a hostage coming up the stairs. Always badly stuck on a guard there. That guard, that. Oh, he was like a frame away from getting shot, that hostage. I would say. Okay. Phantom Tracker Bug. I mean, look, if this this might be a glimpse into your future if you're thinking about picking up GoldenEye 007 and uh, playing Frigate 00. Hosh has escaped. Okay. Here's the Phantom here. <laughs> he always looks uh, pretty fried, that's for sure. Escape. Is he gonna wait? Oh, yes, it does. Oh, shit. <laughs> Holy shit, what the fuck was that? Was that like a 120? What's up? See, I didn't complete now. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, shit. <laughs> Holy shit, what the fuck was that? Was that like a 120? Holy shit. 123. <laughs> That'll do for a minute. Wow. Um, okay, let's, let's see what we can cook up next. This is about two weeks later. Oh, now he's he's played 50 more hours. He wants 117 quite badly. He got 118 a couple days earlier. His movements, his movements getting better for sure. <laughs> you want to shoot the phantom there to generate lag. Okay, nice shots. Decompleted, you could hear it snap onto the uh, the helicopter nicely. Hostage escaped. I mean, to his credit, yeah, a lot of the early records were in English, but like, English isn't very easy to play. Um, the auto is just so much worse, Japanese is so much better, that's why all the recent records are Japanese. Oh my god! 15! Yes! Yes! 17. Ah, uh, I thought it was 16. I'll do it one second. <laughs> I thought it was 16. It was on the frame. Uh. So, by this point he had 118. He was trying to time leaving into the boat for 116. That, I guess, was maybe his goal. Even though it says forget 117 attempts. Okay, now he's on NTSC. He's at 93 hours. Let's see what happens now.
Oh, we really getting s messed up there. Jeez. Whoa! Wow. Wow, this is not... I mean, his movement's better, but he's making a lot of mistakes. Oh, sh I can't believe it! Holy crap! <laughs> wow. 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 Oh man. That run is dedicated to Irie Butler. Holy shit. I'll say it was a pretty cooked run. Um. I mean, look how much time, 113 now, look how much time he loses here, like, four seconds, three, four seconds. Okay, um, now we are at 144 hours, we're about a month later. And he's gone. Yeah, that guard is actually a, a, a trickster. I mean, he... If you make too much noise in the base event, he'll show up, the double phantom guard. He's not very friendly. So now we're December 2019. 144 hours, and now he wants 110. And what's kind of crazy is he's still... Look, his PB is still 113. So he's been playing... Um, 50 hours with no new PB now. That's serious. I mean, think about that, right? 50 hours and he hasn't had a 112 or better completion? Yikes. And now it's like he says 110 is his goal. He's failed a 107 as his best fail. So like he's improving, you know? You imagine he would want um, 110 now or, or lower. You've caught the very tail end, Golden Cliche. The very, very tail end. Oh. Barely end up saving that guy. I can't believe that shit, man. <laughs> okay. Completed. What's up? Good uh, death animation. Completed. Complete. Escaped. Wow. Shouldn't have hung about at the end, maybe? Ah, <laughs> oh, it's a shit pace. Oh, it's a 112. Oh, I could have got 111, maybe? Oh. PB is a PB. That's a good way to look at it. PB is a PB. Uh, he says on the rankings, not a great run, but a PB is a PB. I had a 110A complete yesterday with a failed bug throw. So I won't be happy till 110 happens. Well, incredibly, a few hours later, he's now at 147. It's like the next day. Let's see. He did get a little bit stuck on the stairs, I would say. Nice warp. This is... he's not getting that... This is... he's getting... moving through real quick. Okay. There's one escaped. 
another escaped. Oh man, this is getting... Another escaped. this much uh this time is the 13th best time uh on the rankings he says this two completions one day so glad this is done i doubt i'll be trying for anything better at least not this decade and it's a tie for 13th place that shows you i hope uh just what it takes to get a good time in golden eye 007. Uh, pretty insane. But hey, he's happy with it, and that's uh, that's good stuff, so... Wow. Cool, I'm, I mean, that was that was a cool kind of journey, a little got a glimpse of his 150-hour journey to, uh, to, um, a PB he's satisfied with, so... Pretty epic. We're gonna watch the TAS now, it's gonna be the last run of the night. Um... It's dedicated to our newest Speedlord champion, Sammy Limex, who just uh, became one as the stream started. Thank you, Sammy. No, you're fast asleep now, but there you go. And um, let's watch the Frigate Double O TAS. Pay close attention. Pay close attention. So he's shooting in the cutscene. Why is he shooting in the cutscene? How can you shoot in the cutscene? This seems very strange. Well, yes, he's using control style 2.3. Okay. He's shooting to lure a little bit there. You could also free that hostage in, uh, in control style 2.3. You could. But, you know, it's... Um, I, w I wonder if you could also get a, a pretty good TAS with that strategy. But he chooses to use this strategy. This is indeed White Ted, that's right. He uses a grenade to... to I mean, look. Remember what I was kind of trying to go for with the... Um, the all the crazy basement strategies? I mean, that's... Using a grenade to free that hostage. It's kind of the ultimate version of that. Whether it be consistently doable on console or not is another story, but uh, probably not. Well, he got a grenade off of a guard. Guards can pull grenade grenades in this level, and he was able to get one off of a guard who uh, who pulled it. And he's got to look... Remember, he's got to keep the helicopter loaded as he throws... as the bug lands. And he's in there. So, pretty epic stuff. That, again, Toolless is speed speedrun by White Ted. But it is a 53, 11 seconds better than the current world record. Um, yeah, so we know stuff like 103, 102 is probably possible. How much lower can be possible? And, you know, Ted actually just got this uh, Frigate 22 agent. He actually made a one hour tutorial about it. But you can see in the opening cutscene. He uses 2.3 to free the bridge hostage. That's, yeah, two hour tutorial. So you can see hostage released in the cutscene. 
Now 2.3 using it is really, really wonky. There's hostage escaped. And he goes on to use this technique to uh, to get frigate 22 on agent, the world record. But it brings in the question, like, could you do that on double O? And yeah, he does something interesting on his TAS by luring a grenade. Interesting strategy. But might this also be a viable strategy on double O as well, using the 2.3? So um, maybe, maybe not. I guess we'll have to uh, find out as the future comes along in in GoldenEye and see where things are. So I think that'll be the next evolution of Frigate Double O is people using the 2.3 control style. Um, but who who the heck knows? Maybe 104. I mean, 104 is pretty good. It could end up uh, staying the record for a very long time to come. So, wow. Well, my friends, that is the story the unabridged story of Frigate Double O Agent and all the amazing records and speedruns performed on the stage. And, I mean, as you can tell, one of the most dramatic stages in-game and outside of the game. Uh, a lot of elite history and lore based, centered around Frigate Double O Agent. A lot of crazy things that have taken place because of the stage, on the stage, and... I'm sure many things like that will continue to take place over the next 10 or 20 years or however long people continue to speedrun GoldenEye. A huge thanks to the Patreon legends for supporting the series on Patreon. Thank you from, uh, from the bottom of my heart. You know, it's truly epic. Uh, you guys support the series so much and I always, always appreciate it. Uh, hey, next month we'll be back once again with another Speed Lore episode, uh, so you'll want to be around for that. I'm sure you'll see it. Uh, big thanks to everyone for hanging out, watching, chatting, leaving nice comments, lurking, and uh, everyone. My friends, stay true, and I'll see you in the next stream or video. Good night. <laughs>